Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at a team for the Ultra League Summer Cup Edition here, which is going to be also an interesting cup here. Already made a top team video today, definitely check that one out if you haven't already. This team was on here as well. And this team definitely performed pretty well for me as well. Um, had two four one sets and one four one four sets, so yeah, didn't start too good, but also didn't really have the best um yeah, matchups in general with this one, but still came around there and had a great set at the end there, the great two sets at the end, getting me also to my ELO reveal for this season, which is going to be also interesting, of course, going to be at the end of the video. Don't skip till then, we're going to take a look today at this team here. This team is going to be pretty weak against those Fire-type Pokemon, but we're still going to have some answers for at least Charizard. Escal Ventral is going to do a ton of damage here. If you don't have a Galvantula, the better save swap would be Zekrom. Zekrom would really be preferred for this team here, would have helped us out quite a bit, I feel like. But also, maybe not because this Galvantula allows you to be a little bit better against leads of Walrein, which I faced quite a bit more than I expected to. So yeah, Walrein lead is definitely better to play with this team here right now, because Galvantula is neutral against it, and your Pokemon in the back, the Magnezone, will be very decent against it. Well, we also encounter quite a lot of Swampert, which is going to be okay for us here, because we were able to knock them out with our Galvantula, and we can go in now into our Magnezone against the opponent's Palkia here, here. Go for one Wild Charge, try to get the shield from the opponent, here and then swap into our good friend Roserade and go for the Leaf Storm in order to knock out the opponent here. Let's take a look at the boom. Bye bye there. And we can go ahead and go into the next one. The Leaf Storm is not really necessary for the Roserade. I feel like that um, Grass Knot might even help it out a little bit more because you don't debuff yourself. And for the matchups where you really need Leaf Storm, Usually Grass Knot is just enough to knock out Pokemon like the Swampert for example or in just most scenarios it's just enough to knock out the opponent because you have a lot of attack already usually you go for the super effective move and so um, yeah Grass Knot usually knocks out most opponents already. Yeah, we're going to encounter actually an interesting Pokemon to face. I actually didn't expect to see that too often. It's going to be the Obstagoon here, which can struggle quite a bit with the current meta, because here you see already Lunch going to do some pretty decent damage, but also we have a Reverisian in the um, meta right now. Reverisian going to be a very hard answer for this Pokemon. Against Pidgeot, it's kind of neutral. Against most Pokemon, it's kind of neutral. Here, it's actually going to do some pretty decent damage against me because I still get to a cross jump here, which I didn't expect because there's a wild with 1 HP in a dream. But Roserade going to core break here. They had two grass types for whatever reason. This will allow us now to farm them all the way down here, but they can also try to swap out if they want to. But we're going to have a ton of energy here right now. Can we farm them all the way down? Let's take a look at this. We cannot, but we can go for another charge move. Like this, they're going to be in farm down range for my Magna Zone, but they're going to even let the move go through and let us farm them all the way down here with their um, Tangrowth they are going to uh, go down from the Poison Jab, so that's going to be fine. Another Swampert lead. I don't really like Swampert to, like in general, with this team. Maybe even the move Bullet Seed might be a little bit better for this Pokemon in this matter, because Bullet Seed would allow you to get to this moves a little bit easier. Gear again for Swampert. Also, Grass Knot might be a bit better, again, because you don't debuff yourself. So, right now, it's kind of risky to go for the Weather Ball. I'm going to shield up the move again from the opponent here, which is going to be the Earthquake this time around, and we're going to get out the Blaziken. We don't really have an answer for Blaziken, so this is going to be a little bit of a tough matchup, but we can hit at least Leaf Storm here and do a ton of damage there. Let's take a look what's coming in. It's going to be the Blaze Kick, which we can still survive. I found them all the way down. They have a still a shield here left, but I can go ahead and try to debuff the opponent's Pokemon. It's going to be the S Cavalier. At this point of time, this game is kind of over. There's not a lot that I can do about this one here right now, because our lead going to still have, of course, a Weather Ball, but yeah, like our Magnezone going to go down here from one Drill Run, and also my lead will not really have the best time, especially with the Swampert here. I'm just going to go for the forfeit. There was not a lot that I can do about this one. Next opponent, horrible lead, but it's going to be fine for us, because we can swap out now into our Galvantula, get out the Verizion, which is going to be very good for our Pokemon in the back, which is going to be, of course, our Magnezone, which now can avoid the Verizian, which might help it out in the back there, because then it might not have to face any hard answer anymore, because we're gonna get out of this Pokemon here right now, we can go ahead and go for another lunch. And as you're going to see here right now, you're going to put them into a range where I might be even able to realign my Pokemon, which might be very interesting. As you see the Stone Edge coming through, I can go for another lunch here right now, Try to go ahead and knock them out, and they're actually going to let this move go through and go into their own Galvantula, allowing me now to align my own Roserade against them, and also go ahead and let this move go through here. 
try to still keep this Pokemon around here and try to do some damage against the opponent's um, Galvantula, but also can still go ahead and go into my Magnezone now. So this might be a very decent play for me. If I can shield this move up here right now, do some damage, maybe get the shield, I should be fine, but they're going to swap out now into the Pidgeot, forcing me to go into my Magnezone. They can go for the debuffing move here, but I think I'm still kind of fine here. They're going to only have double resisted moves against me, and as you can see here as well, it's not going to do too much damage against me here. As we see the wall charge coming through, we can knock them out. In comes Galvantula, of course, again, which only going to have a resisted moves against me here, and I can go ahead and go for the wild charge, get the final shield, and I'm basically 99% sure that I'm going to be able to win CMP against this Pokemon as well, which is most likely the case. We never know because it wasn't CMP, but this weather ball going to be enough to knock them out and win us this game. Let's take a look at the next game. We're going to get the Warren here. We can swap out into our own Galvantula and we're going to be able to get out the Verizian again. You see already how this team kind of works. We're going to get out the answer for the Magnezone. We have a lead that should be able to deal with like most water type Pokemon as well, like or like ground type Pokemon as well. And then we're going to be able to now just hopefully realign our Pokemon thanks to the debuffing moves of the Galvantula here. Actually, I thought of even going for like Poison Fang Galvantula because it might be also interesting for this matchup, but honestly, I think Lunch is still fine. Just going for the debuff the entire time allows you to survive on Stone Edge. And here we're going to see that we try to farm them all the way down. I'm going to use a shield here, I think, just to realign. Oh no, actually, I'm going to let this move go through and I can farm them down with my Magnezone. Giving me a little bit more energy here, but sadly, it's going to be a hard counter matchup. I think even if I realigned, I wouldn't have the best time of my life, or would I? Actually, I think if I realigned, I would have been able to win this game. Maybe. Now, if they played right there, I would have also lost because the Warren still has Earthquake, which would have knocked me out as well with the Magnezone. So I think there is nothing I can do here. I can still knock them out with that one. If I had Grass Knot, I would have been better off because I think I actually would have been able to win this game because this would have done way more as well as my Poison Fangs would, my Poison Jabs would have done more. Like this, I sadly don't really have the chance here to win this game still because they can just go ahead and go for a charge move. But if I had Grass Knot again, I would have been better off. I think Leaf Storm is kind of too much for this Pokemon. You don't really need it. I think Grass Knot might be a little bit better than Leaf Storm, but you can decide for yourself. I want to go for the fun um, move here, and now we're going to be able to see the Charizard coming in here, which will be interesting for us. Well, we're going to see the Dragon Claw coming in. Great bait, by, great bait by the opponent. Can we also bait them here and get a shield from them? Uh, nope, we cannot. And this is not really looking too good, as we're going to be now down two shields here with the Charizard going for a Blast Burn. It's still going to have some energy here at least, but in comes a Pokemon that I don't really want to face as well. Oh no, it's going to be the Ampharos again. I will be able to go for a charge move here, going to be the lunge. They can let this move go through and they still have to go for two more, but it's going to come in here now the Empoleon, which is going to be an interesting one as I can go ahead and go for the lunge and get the shield from the opponent now. They're still going to be able to reach another charge move, going to get the final shield with this discharge here, and I still have a Leaf Storm stored here, going to knock out the opponent with ease, and this is going to be really good for us as we now have still our Magnus Zone here against the opponent, as they still go for one charge move. This is a Focus Blast. It is a Focus Blast. Can we still win this game though? We can win this game with a CMP tie here win with our Roserade. Good game there. Nothing the opponent can do here anymore. And we will go for the next game here right now. Zapdos in the lead. That's going to be also a tricky one. I can swap out immediately though. Which will now allow us to go, go for some lunge damage against the opponent here. I always think that um, bug type moves are resisted by a rock type. Pokemon, but it seems like it's not the case. And I should have most likely let this move go through here, and I do let this move go through here, but I should have most likely went for my lunch straight away, which I didn't do here. So this was not really ideal, but I will still be able to realign my Pokemon, which is going to be very nice for me. And I'm still going to get out of this matchup with a move start, which is going to be very decent for me as well. As I'm going to let this move go through, we see the uh, the S Cavalier coming in here right now. A Pokemon that I really didn't want to face here. Yeah. S Cavalier is actually a pretty decent Pokemon, which I didn't really consider while team building either that um, this Pokemon even exists, but it seems like a very decent Pokemon to use right now. It's not even that bad against like those flying type Pokemon as well, because against the Pidgeot you're going to um, have at least still neutral damage with a counter, and still a Mega Horn going to do a ton of damage as well. So very decent Pokemon actually to use. Here we're going to see how much damage a Thunderbolt did there, which was kinda wild. As the drill pack going to be luckily double resisted, so it does a little bit less. We can go ahead and go for two wild charges here. This will debuff our defenses, giving the opponent minimum farm here with their S Cavalier while forcing the shield from the opponent as well. I can go ahead, shield this move up, and it's going to be an aerial ace. Which this means is that we're going to be able to survive this next one as well after we had some frame dumps there again. 
And we will be able to go ahead, go for the weather ball here, knock them out with this one, and going to be able to win this game against S Cavalier, even though it's kind of a difficult Pokemon to deal with. Next opponent, let's take a look at this game. We're going to face an Ampharos again in the lead. Let's take a look what we can do here. We're going to get the Wall Switch onto us. Of course, resist, and they go straight for the Brutal Swing. This is going to hurt quite a bit because we are a very squishy boy there. Again, we had some frame drops which didn't allow me to get an extra fast move through, so I gave the opponent a free fast move in return. We have even more frame drops here. I love the game right now, honestly. Frame drops are wild. But which I actually will realize now as well, which I'm most likely going to do as well for the future, I have to see. Um, my old phone doesn't have um, frame drops. It's my only my Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus has frame drops. The phone that I used prior doesn't have any frame drops at all, so... I find it so weird, like why does, like a new phone does have frame drops, but an old phone doesn't, I just don't understand. But like if you have, for example, an old phone laying around, it might be worth it to try that one out if you also encounter all the frame drops that I encounter, because it might be just something with the hardware or whatever, I actually have no idea why old phones are better for Pokemon Go than new phones. But yeah, we're going to see here the Ampharos going for the, some Brutal Swings. Maybe I should have actually went ahead and went into my Magnezone here instead. But they're going to actually stay in here, which allows us to get some extra energy. Which is so important, as you're going to see now. The Galvantula coming in, and this Pokemon will not appreciate the Weather Balls. They are only now up against my um, Rosa right here. And I still have my Magnezone in the back, which can go ahead and go for one Wild Charge. At this point of time, the opponent basically gets up by only going for fast moves and not throwing charge moves anymore. Because they know all the moves that they can have are resisted and this is going to be so good for us. So we're going to be able to win this game here. Two more games to go. Horrible lead again. We can swap out into Galvantula and we're going to get out a Polyrath for whatever reason, but I can take this one because I can now go ahead and go for the Discharge, gonna do a ton of damage. I don't even have to shield up their an incoming Scald most likely here, because I still survive that they can get the attack drop, which is, can be a little bit difficult for me, but it's still going to be fine as they're going to get out the War Rain. This is going to be okay for us as well, but at this point of time I forgot what we had in the lead, so I didn't really pay too much attention, so I didn't really know what I really had to do here, but I can just let this move go through here, go into my Magnus Zone, and as you're going to see, the opponent does not really enjoy that one quite a bit here, so I can go ahead and go for a charge move against them. It's going to be the Wild Charge, we can knock them out, and ah, oh, they had the Pidgeot, so we're going to be able to just swap out here, clear our debuff, and get some damage in with our Roserade here, as they are forced to throw a charge move, which is going to be so good for us, as look at the health of the opponent, it's the Declines pretty fast as we can even go for another charge move here and we basically got the knockout here as the opponent decides to forfeit this game here with not shooting anything and just actually forfeit with like 1 HP there. Very nice for us. Final game for today, we're going to have the Stunfest there in the lead, and we're going to get out the Zapdos. What we can do here is we can try to force a shield from the opponent, which works out so, so well, as we can now go ahead and go into our Magnet Zone, which is a very good counter against the opponent. But of course, now we can just let this move go through. Thunderbolt still going to do a ton of damage, as you can see here. This is resisted damage. It still does so much damage. It's wild. But we can still knock them out here. In comes the Verizian. I should have went for the Mirror Shot in time, but I didn't get to it for whatever reason. And now it's just going to go down in yeah who are going to be able to win this matchup here we can go ahead and go into our own girl eventually and try to debuff the opponent a little bit with their Rizian, which might be the best idea here so you're going to let this move go through from the opponent you can swap out now into my Verizian here and into my uh, Roserade here as well as so you're going to get out the opponent's Stunfisk. This is now a guessing game. Do they go for the shield? Do they not go for the shield? We will find out shortly. As they can go ahead and go for the Leaf Storm here, trying to do as much damage as possible. But again, we're going to get debuffed from that, which is really hurting us at this point of time. As we're forced to shield up the moves here. As we're forced to shield to go for a Leaf Storm against the opponent here as well. But they sadly get to another charge move before. We even reach that move here, but we can go ahead and go for the leaf storm here right now. And we will see that this is going to do a ton of damage, but not enough to knock them out. We are forced to go into the Galvantula here, as they can still go for their mud bombs. I have to try to knock out the opponent's Stunfist because I don't really have anything to farm down, and I can't do that here. Can we still win the game though? It's going to be such a close one. We're going to see the Verizian coming in here. Can we still go ahead and go for one a weather ball to knock them out? We will find out shortly, as they can farm us all the way down here. Can we reach that move in time? We cannot. And this is going to be sadly a loss for the last game for today. But I hope you still enjoyed this video as we can claim a 4-1 here as you can see. And we get our final starter rating here and it's going to be the 2183. Not really high but it's still going to be fine. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.